So I came up with my first idea when I was in second grade. Our teacher asked us to come up with an idea and create a prototype. I thought for a long time about everyday problems I had as a seven-year-old. <laughs> Then it hit me: I hated when it would rain and my pants would get wet. I grew up in Montana, and if you haven't experienced rain in Montana, it doesn't come lightly trickling straight down from the sky. It comes in at a 45-degree angle, cold, hard, and fast. My solution was perfect. I'd create an umbrella that extended all the way to the ground. So I got to work creating my prototype: a shower curtain taped to a plate. <laughs> Fast forward 25 years, I'm now a software engineer and an inventor at IBM. With 370 inventions and counting, I'm the most prolific female inventor in IBM history. <laughs> But not much has changed since my first idea. I'm still solving everyday problems using existing technologies. As an inventor, when I look at a cool new piece of technology, I can see what the future might hold. We're already seeing a shift from the Internet of Things to the Internet of Everything. If you ask any technologist to predict the future, they will undoubtedly tell you the same three things. In the future, technology will be faster. Smaller and cheaper. So let's assume we're right. That means in the future, every household item, no matter how inexpensive, will be able to connect to the internet to share information with anyone or anything willing to listen. But in order to make sense of all this new data, we need software. I've always loved writing software. I think part of that love stems from the fact that I get to boss computers around. Unlike my kids, there's no hesitation or talking back. <laughs> If you ask a computer to do something, it will hang on your every word. <laughs> When I was an undergrad at Carnegie Mellon University, I remember one evening running into a group of students huddled around their computers. When I got closer, I noticed that they had phones attached to their laptops. They were writing mobile apps. It was the first time I stepped back and realized that we could control our things. Using software, but the code was complicated. To send a text message would have taken them over 40 lines of code. Today, we can do the exact same thing with a single line of code. How exciting is this for developers? And this is just SMS. It is just as easy to connect to back-end services and device sensors. I've never considered myself to be a hardware person, but earlier this year, I attended an open-source conference. And I was blown away with this presentation that showed how, with just a couple lines of code, we could connect one device to another. I was so excited that that night, I stayed up almost all night. I know I'm a nerd, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> But I made this mobile application to control a NeoPixel matrix by drawing on my smartphone, a modern-day light bright. Now it was that I could do more than just invent new ideas. I can create working prototypes. And inexpensively. In April, I backed a Kickstarter project called Metaware. It's a tiny board about the size of a quarter. It has Bluetooth, an accelerometer to track movement, and temperature sensors. You can also add additional sensors and lights, making it really easy for developers to make wearables. It's like a Lego kit for adults, and at only $35, it's about the same price. Innovators today can use crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter to self-fund, self-promote, and get feedback from people from all over the world, opening the doors to a whole new group of people. Gone is the middleman. It's also possible to create software today without writing a single line of code. Using the apps like If This Then That, we can combine two existing applications and create something new. In this recipe, I created. If I haven't reached my Fitbit step goal by 5 p.m., it'll automatically create a status update on Facebook, <laughs> letting everyone know how lazy I was. <laughs> the speed of invention in the future will be as fast as we can dream up ideas. We'll be able to use each other's innovations to test drive ideas and find inspiration to keep solving everyday problems. 
So, in the future, we'll never buy toilet paper again. Each toilet paper roll will talk to your favorite online merchant and reorder itself when it's running low. <laughs> If you haven't worn a piece of clothing in over six months, the hanger will glow red. And your closet will suggest you donate it. <laughs> we'll be safer, and not just because of our home security sensors, but because of our pets. They will wear tiny sensors to measure their heart rates, and if they get overly excited when you're not home, you'll be notified. <laughs> we'll never have to waste time as a group deciding what to watch. Our devices will know who is in the room, and we'll be able to aggregate everyone's watched and unwatched list. To suggest something to watch that nobody has seen, we might all cuddle up in front of the same television, or watch separately from holograms in our hands. In the future, if you're at the office and it starts to rain, but you don't have an umbrella, no problem. You'll be able to 3D print one up in a matter of minutes. When you get home. You'll be able to melt down that same umbrella and reimagine it into a toy to entertain your children while you prepare dinner in an oven that preheated itself based on a recipe chosen by you or Chef Watson. <laughs> How many of you have asked Siri for directions? Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> or saw Watson compete on Jeopardy? It is already possible for computers to translate human language. Into a language that they can understand to solve problems. So, in the future, every single one of us will be able to create software simply by telling a story. And now, for my big prediction: <laughs> people weren't meant to live forever. Each generation, we don't just pass along our DNA; we pass along our ideas. The innovations we uncover today become the building blocks. For innovations for future generations, but each new innovation brings with it a whole new set of challenges to be solved. Despite this trend of moving from the Internet of Things to the Internet of Everything, our lives in the future won't really change. We'll still fall in love, experience heartbreak, lose loved ones, and have babies. We'll make discoveries, appreciate art, and tell stories. But the time saved that we otherwise spent on repetitive tasks is more time we'll have to experience these unique moments. Our lives in the next 20 to 50 years will pretty much be the exact same as they are today, only with some really cool toys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>